Okay, this video is gonna overview the show files on the Soundcraft SI Expression, what they do, how to use them, and the difference between what those are in the cue list function in the Soundcraft, as well as how that interfaces with Live Professor. So the first thing you'll do when you get to the console to set it up for your rehearsal or your event is go to show, I use this pen because it's a little bit easier. And you need to read, if it's not on the SC2020, if you can see it. If it's not on the SC2020 show file, you need to recall that and then save as, and then enter in your date. That way you're not going to, whatever changes you do, you're not writing over this template file. That's the first thing you need to do is recall this and save it as something else. That way this file doesn't get trashed. Uh, one thing I will do is I'll take a jump drive and save this file to the jump drive so that it can get recalled. So if something does happen, you can pop the drive in and recall this file again, and we'll be back to this point every time. We want to start from the same starting point every week or every event. So let's just pretend that I did a save as and saved it as the date. So we'll say November 1. Okay. So then it'll say right there, November 1. And that show file will contain patch settings, configs for the entire console, all of that, like the general overview of everything is stored in that. Then your, the diff, so then your queue list, if you hit right there in your queue list, looks like there's a couple of things in here by default. Um, those would be your actual songs, like they're labeled. Song one, song two, song three, song four. And then those, you will be able to navigate by hitting the next button. And you also can store and recall. Um, and so you can navigate through your songs and it will recall the fader positions um, and effects configuration. Those are really the only two things that this needs to recall. Um, and you can, uh, as a little side note, if we go into the show file, all of this stuff that's scrolling through here where it says input recall, I, like all the different isolation, all of these things, I'll go through and set all this. So pretty much the only, everything will be isolated except fader positions for the main mix and effects settings. We don't want to be recalling anything else because it could get really, really confusing unless you know specifically what you're doing. So like you wouldn't want to recall gain adjustments per song because then everybody's in your mixes will be changing since that's the first thing in the signal flow. Um, and so you can get to that stuff in the show file window if you need to access it. Um, but going back to the cue list, if you select your song or your, your cue rather and go to edit cue, this will get you to the menu where all of the MIDI information is. Now this is important because this, the MIDI transmit function is um, telling the console when this cue gets recalled, send this specific MIDI information to Live Professor and then Live Professor or whatever other device really that's connected to the MIDI network on this um, will change based on whatever program change um, communications you put into the queue. So um, what that looks like is we need to turn this on where it says program change, turn it on. And then let's say this is actually song three. So we want to go program number input three. It, it could be whatever number. Um, I would just suggest actually following whatever order uh, you're looking at. So if it was song one, it would be one, song two would be two and so on. So we'll go ahead and hit apply. So now program number three. So what happens when that cue gets recalled, it's going to send this command to Live Professor and it will, um, it will recall whatever that command is stored to. And so I'll show you that right now. So if we open up Live Professor, uh, we wanna go to project, new project, and then South Creek Worship Center 2020. Hit that. Uh, if this comes up, do you want to change this and I just hit project? Uh, hit no. If that message comes up. 
So the first thing we do now that this template is open is we want to save it because if, the, if we make a bunch of changes in here and it's not saved and it loses power, everything will be gone. So we're going to go to project, save project, and then it's defaulting to the folder, which is just a folder on the desktop called Live Professor Files, and just save it by the date. Okay? So let's just, we'll just call this test for now, but you'll want to save it by the date. That way it can get recalled. So now we have it, you can see right here at the top, it says test. That would normally say whatever the name of the file is, if it's date or so on. We want to label the channels. So whoever is on these vocal mics, name it just so you can see what's going on. Um, and then on the right hand side where it says global snapshots, this is where you put in your snapshots and when these get recalled, it changes all of the parameters uh, for your plugins. So let's just do this. If you hit the plus button, that dialog comes up and we'll just do song one, hit okay. So now whenever this gets recalled, it will pull back whatever settings these plugins have. So whether it's an EQ adjustment or the key of the song or so on, that information gets recalled based on when the snapshot is recalled. So what we want to do is get it so um, Live Professor recalls this setting based on the MIDI commands coming out of the console. So let's, let's do this just so it is a little bit clearer. So song three, because the console over here, there's a cue named song three. So in um, Live Professor, we'll just name it song three just, just so it matches. Um, ideally, you would do this for every song, so you'd have one, two, three, four, and so on. So we have previously already entered in the program change, turn that on, and set it to program number three. So when this queue gets recalled, it's going to send a MIDI command to this computer. So what we need to do is just tell Live Professor, when you get that note, or that specific command, recall this snapshot. And so the way we do that is if we click right here on this little logo, this little icon, it looks like a MIDI connector, this little five pin end, this dialog comes up. It says no trigger set. So what it's saying is there's nothing set to recall this cue, or snapshot rather. So if we hit learn, what that's going to do is it says listening now. That's listening for any MIDI information coming down the line. And when it hears it, then it'll set it to that snapshot. So when it receives that signal again, it'll recall that snapshot. So once it's set to listening, we can go back to the console and simply hit recall for whatever cue we want to be assigned to that snapshot. So right now we're on song three, so we could actually hit the cue list and back out. So we're back to our, our list here. So if I just hit this recall, it recalled random stuff on the console that was stored to that cue, but also You'll see it picked up program change three. So now anytime program change three gets sent, it will recall that snapshot in Live Professor. And program change three is what we set in the queue list for song three. So then any so now when service rolls through, you repeat that for all of your songs, and all you have to do is hit this next button. All you have to do is hit next and it will just bump down the list and it will follow in Live Professor and go right down your, your snapshot list. Um, one other thing that uh, is good to note is the patching and how to get the audio from the preamp of the console or the stage box to Live Professor and then back. That's something that is stored in a template but it's something that you should be aware of. Um, so what, what, what is happening is we have our four vocals right here, right? Whatever the preamp, wherever it's patched to, it could be on the back of the console, the stage box, Dante, whatever. It comes in to vocal one, and then what happens is it, uh, I believe before it hits any of the circuitry here, it goes through the USB, through the accessory card, into the computer, and then it is patched in Live Professor, it gets processed and then comes back, hits the circuitry on the console, hits your fader, hits your on button, and then comes out of the PA. The band, their ears, 
takes that signal before it gets to live professor. So the band is not hearing anything you're doing with any of the plugins or any of the EQing or dynamics. We want to keep it that way because the time it takes to go through all the processing would throw the band off. It'd be too much. It's called a latency and that would be really, really disorienting to the band. Um, the patching on the accessory card on the Soundcraft is 64 channels in, 64 channels out. So what that means is the first 32 are coming to and from the stage box. So if we were to look at channel one, the kick in mic, if we go to inputs, we'll see that that is patched to SRA01. What that essentially means is, is the A bank first input on the stage box. So if we go in here and look at this, we should have 32, 32 inputs selected from the compact mini analog mic slash line in inputs. If we keep arrowing over, or it's before this rather, then we see these other, it's uh, 33 through 64. Those are coming on the USB port of the card. What that equates to is in the software on the computer, it's 1 through 32, if that makes sense. So 1 through 32 on the console on the card are coming from the stage box. 33 through 64 are coming from the computer, the computer's outputs. But the computer sees those outputs as 1 through 32. And then on the flip side, Outputs out of the console, it's the same idea. Outputs to the card, 1 through 32, go to the stage box. 33 through 64 go to the USB cable on the computer. But the computer sees those um, outputs out of the console into the computer as 33 through 64. So what that means as far as effects processing and Reaper, Live Professor, all that stuff. Live Professor... Literally, each one of these channels, if you click on them, it shows your patch, and it's really straightforward. So vocal one is literally in one, out one. Vocal two is in two, out two. Vocal three is in three, out three, and vocal four, and so on. You can just keep going down the list. You could add more. It doesn't really matter because there's enough channels. We haven't run into an issue running out of channels yet because we have 32 in and 32 out on the USB cable. But something to be aware of is the computer sees this as in one, out one, and the list goes down to 32. Um, on the soundboard, it does not match that. As, a, as I mentioned before, one on here, in one, out one, is really 33 in, 33 out on the console. And we can see that if we go to the insert button right here, we tap on it. This is where your inserts are assigned. Okay, so this is the insert is how the signal gets out of the preamp into wherever. You, you could patch this to physical analog outputs on the back of the console if you had a hardwired compressor, an analog compressor, or EQ, or whatever. In this case, we're sending it out of a USB port, and I'll show you that patching in a second. Um, but this is how you assign the inserts to specific channels. So you can just select an insert, and then select a channel like that. And then when you tap on this, then you can select it. And so now for the acoustic channel, a signal comes into the preamp, is going to insert five, and then does wherever it's gonna go, comes back, and then hits the rest of the circuitry on the console. Now this won't work because insert five is not set up. So if we were to tap on insert setup on the bottom, and scroll down to insert five, you see it says unassigned. If I can get it to show. So it says unassigned. So essentially the audio is not going anywhere. So it's set up on the insert, but it's not actually going out anywhere. So you would need to patch that to either the physical inputs and outputs on the console or create another signal flow in Live Professor and patch it to five. So essentially the insert numbers are matching Live Professor's numbers here via these, where it says digital in and out. So remember I said on the card on the back of the console, it sees it 
as output 33 in 33, sets the concept. So 33, that's where it matches up. So 33 right here is insert one, and that me matches input and output one right there in Live Professor. So I hope that kind of makes sense. Um, I'm gonna undo this insert on the acoustic because that's not needed and it's not going anywhere anywhere. So if you ever run into an instance where you see signal on the meter, you push up the fader and you're not getting signal, probably what's happening is either you don't have Live Professor running and an insert is set up um, or something with the patching is messed up. You wanna make sure that the console is on before you open Live Professor because what happens is the computer sees the soundboard as an interface. So if you open Live Professor before the console is booted up, Live Professor will default to the internal sound card on the computer and you can't get any audio that way. It needs to be connected to the soundboard for it to work. Um, so if you're in a pinch and you can't get it working, you're running out of time, what I would suggest is just go to your insert and just bypass, just bypass these. So you would just select it and just unassign it. So then what happens is the signal is just coming from the preamp directly to all the circuitry and then out to the, the PA, fader and all that. So you would get sound, you'd be able to work and do what you need to do to get your event moving you wouldn't be able to do anything with your plugins at that point because you essentially bypass that insert. Um, but that is the five-second uh, overview of how this works. Hope that helps.